Howdy folks, this is Checkers, and this is Citadel Forged with Fire. This is our second look at Citadel, and we are here in Raincourt, standing in a red puddle, because once you enter the game, it doesn't really take into account the gear you're wearing, so I'm having to heal up my health and mana. I can speed that along using one of my potions, but I wanted to point out the red pool, which heals you, and the blue pool, which gives you back some mana. Now, it's been a while since we've taken our first look. I was level 1 to around 6 or so, and we are level 19, closing in on 20, so I have been a little bit busy. I have been building a few things I have made some new weapons so that you can take a look and see what the different weapon types do. Oh yeah, and then there's this. Just the ability to fly with a broom. Now, if you'll notice, my mana in the upper left there is decreasing as we fly. If we drink a potion, we can prevent that, or at least offset it for a while. But we can build whilst flying, and we can travel pretty far, pretty fast. And so let's take a look at some of the uh, structures that you can use to make things. This is the forge which can be used to make some weapons like this axe, Simeon's axe, which is kind of a melee spell weapon. And also your ingots, iron, gold, and I haven't actually run into these other ones yet. Consumables, nothing. Trinkets, nothing yet. Shirts and hats. Skull cap. Oh yeah, I'm actually wearing different armor. I was wearing cloth last time. I'm wearing leather now. I have a skull cap, which is more armor and plus 65 mana. Another chest piece for 51 armor and 105 health. Another leg wraps for 30 armor and boots for 10 armor and 6 movement speed. And there is our other weapon, our offhand weapon. So I said before that it has kind of a Harry Potter vibe. And uh, I think, you know, it uh, pretty much does. I would say... <laughs> Uh, in a good way. And... Whoa. I think the recording software is taking a little bit of a chunk out of the game. Not as much as the first time, but... Oh, important safety tip for flying. Press F to fly with your broom there. And T to drink mana so we don't fall to our doom. But should we accidentally hit F, we can hit F again. I've done that more than once, where I thought I was hitting the mana potion and hit the broom and knocked myself off. But yeah, there we are. And so I was up there constructing earlier, but I figure I'm getting close to level, so I would come over here and... Oh, that's right. I have the wand configured for something other than extraction. So these weapons that I have now, they're all tier 2 weapons, the second of each set. I don't have all the spells for the gauntlet. Well, I don't have the first attack spell. That's all I have for any of them is the first attack spell. But I don't have it yet for the gauntlet. We need to hit level 20 for that. So I thought we might take a look at how building works at a higher level. Not just like level 19, but actually up higher. So, let's gather up a bit more wood. As that's what we're going to need. And... Having the higher level weapon definitely seems to pull in more resources. And, you know, honestly, I'm a little not sure... But let's switch weapons, and I'm going to actually put the extract spell back on the wand. 
I got the feeling that the wand actually didn't extract quite as much as, or at least quite as quickly as that axe did. Like, the axe almost always seems to collect in groups of two, but the wand has a lot of single uh, collections per tick. But, in general, oh, looks like we are topped out. So there are four weapons. There's the gauntlet, the wand, the... Uh, actually, let's take a look at doing this. We can build while on the fly. I just have to be a little bit careful that I don't exceed my mana. And if we want to uh, put a roof on, that was the other thing. I left this open so that we could take a look at the roofing. Here we would put a corner piece in and I have these supports in here because it won't actually put in the flats without some support. So if I wanted to now fill in, where is that piece here? Diagonal. Let's get some mana going there. I don't think I have all that many. So I do have to be a little careful that I don't plummet to my doom. And I'm going to leave that wall open for now. And burn through wood a lot faster than you would think. Alright, let's go out of build mode. Come on down here. And turn off flying. And we'll have a vitality potion. We're going to switch back to the axe. So it may be an illusion, but I do feel like it collects a bit faster. No, it definitely collects faster. Even its single tick is much faster. So anyway, the weapons, we have the gauntlet, which is a channeled weapon. The wand, which, if you wanted to think of it in contemporary terms, would be like a handgun. It's very fast, and it can be accurate at range, but it's not the highest damage. Then you have the staff, which would be something like a kind of limited rocket launcher. And then there is the axe here, which could best be described as kind of mm, a shotgun. Think of a shotgun that was kind of limited to the ground. So we can't point it up. Its damage travels along a path. And I'll show you that in just a moment. We'll go off and find something. Other things that I've found out since last we met is that although I didn't really want to zap the elk if I didn't have to, it is pretty much the best way to get hide. Oh, that was 6 o'clock. There's the 6 o'clock lag. So these boars, we can't loot them, but we can fight them. So if you notice that travels along the ground, it's not bad. It is a lot of damage. I don't particularly love it, but I do like the high damage. Let's take a quick look at how the wand works. Much faster, ranged weapon. And it can literally go for days. You can see those actually travel really far. We can loot the wolf here, so we'll do that. We'll get a pelt and some light essence. Actually, get two pelts and a light essence. Um, we've seen the staff fight before. Let's see if there's something actually at range. Okay, there's a wolf over there. Oh, there's one right here, too. And there is our level. There's a boar. Let's try the boar at range here. So the shotgun... Uh, sorry. The axe cannot do this. The axe's range is quite limited. If you watch the ground, that's how far it goes. And it's not really that flashy image. It's this orange image that gives you the range on it. 
like I said, it's still not bad. It's great for extraction, and it is also great when you're extracting and not paying attention and something sneaks up on you. You can really give it what for with the axe. So now we have hit level 20, and we can do something entirely new, but I want to get back to, you know, the broom is so awesome. I have to say I love this broom. Oh, it makes me so happy. You can actually get all of this exploration was with the broom just flying. It was awesome. Um, and eventually I got to some things that looked kind of like a cross between a lich and, um, oh, what were those things in Harry Potter that, uh, the Dementors? Yeah. And I realized I was way out of my league and ran like a little bunny rabbit. Okay, construction things. I started off with the forge and got sidetracked as I do. This is the workbench. Here we can make things like the Death Weaver staff or the Nordos wand. Um, and I think that's about it, really. The broomstick, too. Oh, we've got a level. I totally forgot about that. Here we go. We'll take that. One hit in mana, one hit in carrying capacity. And close that up. This is our tailor tailoring bench. And here we can make the weapon, the bear cog claw gauntlet. Um, inventory leather refined, leather and refined cloth. Uh, shirts and hats. The actual the, the uh, headpiece here was made on the forge. Here is our boiling cauldron and I would actually like to make some potent mana vials so we're going to crank those up to oh let's go with 24. Go crazy because this is our fuel for flying among other things. The Vitality Potions, this simple one that I have right now, I can make by hand, but these need to be made here. I can make uh, mana potions that give me restore 100 mana, which is nice Like if you're in the field and you still want to be flying. But if you want the 200 plus, you need the um, boiling cauldron there. And of course, there are storage crates. And all of these... The crates and the crafting machines are under the build menus under magic. Small, you have your throne. Medium, you have a respawn stone and the chest. And then large, you have the tailoring bench, the forge, the workbench, and the conjuring cauldron. And under decor, all I really have at the moment are these colored torches. I kind of tried to theme them with their with uh, the construction, the crafting tables. And so we have all of our wooden structures here that we can build, but we hit level 20. And that means, actually I was trying to think, did we pick up any extra wood while we were floating about I think we did so my point about these um, supports I think we're gonna have to fly up there a bit see the red it won't go because it doesn't need support so we need to go over to support and put up a support and then we can go back to roof and over to here and touch our roof. And then from there, you honestly only need one. And then I could complete this entire section. But just for symmetry, I like having the extra supports in there. So that is how the supports work. Let's gather up a little bit more wood from this tree that is growing in the middle of our structure. And I'll show you about doors and windows, how those go in. It's a little bit different, I think, than other games in the genre. Um, little hole in the shield there. 
So far, I've got to say, I've still been having a lot of fun. It is very different than the other games of its type, in that it is much more crafting than survival. But, you know, for me, I kind of dig the mellow about it. It's very relaxing, it's very calming, kind of zen, just building and having fun. And flying. And we need more tree. get really spoiled by the broom really fast. You don't actually regenerate mana when you're extracting like this, so that is one downside to flying around to do this, and just something to keep an eye on. But just probably need a little bit more so we can play with windows. Another interesting thing we can point out here is you see this long stretch that I built there. It adds the supports on its own pretty much. It, it realizes where it needs them and throws them in. Interestingly, if I were to break some of it, it would leave the support but take away the upper structure, the platform, which is kind of interesting. I'm not sure what exactly that would be useful for at the moment, but I'm sure it's something. So let's come over here and take a look at how we would make some doors. Actually, first I need to see I have iron ingots. That's good. I guess we are going to close this off because I'm going to need to do that to show you what I'm talking about. So we put up our walls here right quick. And now we can't get inside. Of course, we could fly in over the top, or we can just install a door. Now, this is a large door, so it requires quite a bit of wood and four iron ingots. And then, there we go, door. And so if I wanted to throw in some windows, I can just do essentially the same thing and throw them right on into the wall as it already exists. And if I wanted to take them out, it's basically, if I come up here and go to delete and then click on that, the wall comes back, the window goes away. And actually get some of the resources back, which I think is nice. Put the window back. And I guess we can throw a little bit more roof up there. I don't know that we have enough to do quite everything, but oh no, definitely not. Okay, um, let's come on down here because I want to take a look at something else. Oh, actually, these boots right here came as loot from I attacked a cave. We should probably take a look at that too. Let's go over to our chest here and we'll just find an empty one and say we're going to send stacks. These are bones, which are, you need bones to make this bear claw gauntlet, not bear bones, but just bones, some fur pelts. We're going to keep the gauntlet. We're going to put the boots away. We will put this diluted mana vial away, the crowberries away, the light essence away, leather, and iron ingots away. Then we will come over, I think it's in here, no. In here, no. Somewhere I have my old staff, just so we have different weapons to compare out in the field. We'll grab that. And we need to grab our stack of mana potions so we can fly to our little heart's content. Oh, and one other thing. Since we haven't done it, I've never done this before. Very exciting. We're going to come over to structures, and we are going to unlock stone. And that's all we can afford right now, but we can afford the purify spell with the gauntlet. Okay, so let's take our gauntlet and we've seen the wand, so let's switch the gauntlet out for the wand. And come over to our spell book. 
and put in purify and actually let's try purify and pacify with our gauntlets pacify is what you would use to tame a creature i have never tried that either so let's hop on our broom come over here just for fun and switch weapons we need some stone first i want to take a look at what these stone structures look like since i've never seen them I'm kind of thinking i might do something with this inner area here oh we have an orc coming up actually he'll be a great way to check out the gauntlet let's uh switch back to our gauntlet we're not going to pacify him i guess we could see honestly don't know i'll try pacify first let's see what it does a level 10 orc is it doing something it might be honestly can't tell he doesn't seem terribly impressed though so we'll burn him to the ground channeled spell you need to be a little focused but I really do actually like the gauntlet channel actually kind of like it the most of all of them you have to be able to stay on target but and it's not super high damage um, now look at me all distracted again let's go find another creature so we're going to go find another creature, because I am just ooh shiny. Hey, there's an elk. I bet we can pacify an elk. There's really nothing else we'll be able to do with it, because I don't have... I haven't learned saddles or any of the um, soul-binding stuff. But... Hey, big fella. We're going to try this. I have no idea what it's going to do to you. So, oh, look around his portrait. There's a blue circle that's filling up. And full. And now, team creature. Um, well, in honor of Sky... No! In honor of Skyrim, we name you Milk. Oh, there's a fairy. I'm not gonna try and tame the fairy. Just, you know. Maybe the next one. Not this one, though. No. Maybe the next one. Maybe. Okay. And I don't know how many we can have at once. Let's find out. We've got a level 4 dire wolf here. Come on, wolfie. Got our circle going. Oh, it's okay, milk. There. Oh, tame creature. Um, we will call you Snowy. There. Gun firm. So we have Snowy the wolf and milk the elk. And, um, yeah. You guys just gonna hang out over there now? Cool. What, are you guys, like, having a stare down or something over who, which one of you I love more, or what? Interact, tamed creature. Um, stay, stay, follow, follow passive. How about you? Follow passive. There, come on, guys. It'll be fun. Okay, well, see, now we have a team of critters. Let's go uh, take a look at... Well, first off, let's see how fast they are. Drink a potion so we don't fall. Well, they're still coming. Can't beat that. Unreal Engine looks good. Okay, so... Let's go back to building and see what these... Hey, now. There we go. Stone. Apparently we had to convince it we really meant it. Out of curiosity. I don't think we can do other than build in a way that will line up with the other things. But... Oh, it's not connected. I didn't think about that. Okay, well, let's get it touching. Hi, guys. 
Um, can I extract from that? Let's go B, and then we have to switch. And because the axe and the gauntlets have different stats, my health and my mana change drastically. But, all in all, fun stuff. We should actually... I will uh, let these guys stick around here. And then I will take you all to a cave. And we'll see about getting into a bit of a fight. Oh, I can also show you how to pick up precious stones. I figured that out. Precious stones, sometimes gold ore. Daylight's a coming. And... Yeah. Okay, so, but first, let's get our stone structures here. Touching to our wooden structure, and that should claim them. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And then let's take a look at these. And go out of build. Huh. I dig it. I dig it. I can't wait to build more with it. Okay, so let's... Milk, you stay and... Well, stay and defend yourself. And Snowy, you stay and defend yourself. Boss is going for a trip. Um... Should probably... Heal up a bit. And then... Let's see where... Actually, let me get off the broom while I check out the map. So there's a cave right here. Wildbane Cave. Off we go. And we'll stop and take a look at precious stones and gold ore. The uh, nodes you get that from. I think we'll find some up on top of this hill. There's some in the caves for sure and on top of these hills. So, hopping off the broom, this stone right here. It's kind of red, it has veins in it. You see we're getting stone and gold ore. And we should also get precious stone from it. There's a gold ore. Gold ore and stone. Well, maybe not, did we? Doesn't look like it. Let's try this next one. So a little bit reddish in color. Kind of a pink vein running through it. I heard that thought. Okay, gold ore, gold ore. Um, there we go, one precious stone. Only one, but that's actually looks like we got two. And so we need precious stones for things like the respawn stone and the wand there. And let's go ahead and top off our mana with a potion. And we are not far. We also go for the uh, vitality potion there. And hop on our broom. And try and figure out where this cave is. Maybe, oh, it's right there. Okay, and then off the broom. And so, just like you would, the broom moves slowly if you just move forward. If you press your run key, it moves faster. It moves that crazy fast. Okay, so we want to top off our mana. And actually, this axe is probably a good thing to have. We've got orcs in the cave, so we will just charge up our axe and see if we can't get them to come right here. It is an area of effect weapon. Anything in that path takes the damage. Sometimes it doesn't go quite the way you want it to, though. Sometimes it turns. Not sure why. Just will turn like 90 degrees to the left or something. Diluted health file and leather on this orc. And diluted mana vial and cloth on this orc. And let's see, leather and cloth. Leather, diluted health vial. And cloth and leather. 
And these are rune stones. We could pick up these are little rune stone nodes. Here you see a great example of these precious stones. Or, well, the uh, ore nodes that have the precious stones. There's this one there, and there are a few more over here. Actually, these are a little darker, unless it's interior lighting that's making that one pinker. This one has blue veins in it. Or is it the spell? I don't know. Anyway, look for the ore nodes with veins in them, and you'll, you'll be good to go. And there is a chest over there, and we will check it out. We'll just mop up these nodes right here just to see how we do. So we had two precious stones going in. And... Whoa. These don't appear to be anything. You can't really suck anything up off of these these kind of white bony looking structures and let's check out the chest journeyman skull helm level 15 12 armor no bonus journeyman cloth hood 12 armor no bonus so if you look at mine which is the lower one it says it has 14 armor and a mana and on the right side 65 that's the bonus I mean journeyman far fur tunic Increase armor, chance for increased health. Um, so we'll just take all and the cloth. And then we can look in our inventory and see all of that. We can put these on just for fun. Get kind of a fur look going on. Sorry, I was trying to figure out what just switched there. Um, we can't really switch around to the front, which is kind of a bummer, but there's that. Oh, I put the wrong hat on. Yeah, I don't really see how this one's working out, but anyway, let's see. This one is mine, and that. Now we're back to having our cool stuff on, and yeah. Tab key gets us in and out of that third person view. And there we are. That is an acid pool. Not sure why you'd want that yet. And you don't seem to be able to extract anything from it. But I'm assuming there is a reason for it. Get back on our broom. Trying to figure out where we are. Heading this way. And it does seem that the uh, there's a figure there holding a staff in the distance, a giant figure. Pretty sure you can get there. I got about three quart well, I got you know about here. And uh, I got pretty far up there before I started running into things that looked giant and could fly and could probably devour me so I turned around and there's milk and snowy and yeah and our stone structures I don't think we can I don't know if we can go under these we can check that out Ooh. Okay, so this is our second look here at Citadel Forged with Fire. Just thought I would share some of the uh, progress I've made. Let you see what comes a little down the line. Did we look at all the weapons? I think we did. Not really in depth, but we did everything but fire off the staff this time. We can do that. For those who may not have seen it the first time, the staff is area of effect ranged. Maybe we can take a quick hop out and see if we can find somebody 
What I don't like about the staff and the axe is that it has a somewhat long cooldown time. Well, I think Mr. Elk is gonna probably have a bad day there. So if you notice on cooldown, so I don't really love that particularly. The wand is the fastest as far as the cooldown goes. So you can pretty much, you still see it's trying to be on cooldown, but it fires pretty quickly. The glove, you know, is channeled and really your only difficulty with the glove. Here, let's go find another enemy for our glove. Maybe something a little tougher. These wolves are probably kind of low. Um, oh, almost ran out of juice there. That would have been awkward. And then the famous mage checker has plummeted to his death for not drinking broom juice. There's a bear. What a bear. Okay, so channeled. You know, it's constantly doing damage, we're constantly losing mana, and I have to stay focused, but I don't have to worry about cooldowns. I don't get any area of effect bonus out of it or anything, but so long as you can maintain your focus on the target, I think it's pretty rockin'. Okay, and we'll head back. So, like I said, this is our second look at Citadel Forged with Fire. If you would like to see more, let me know in the comments. And we'll take a look at more. For the moment, though, I would like to point out that if you look in the upper right-hand corner, you will see a small letter I with a white circle around it. These are cards and links to other videos that I've made. Also, I have a Twitter link in the description of the video and on my channel's main page. If you're on mobile, it'll be on my channel's about page. I would like to thank you for being the best community out there. Truly, you guys are awesome and you make this an absolute joy to do. And I really want to thank you for that. I would also like to thank you for watching. I hope you found the video entertaining and maybe just a little informative. I would like to invite you to subscribe, like, and share if you so desire, and to ask you, above all, to please take care. <laughs>